fans, welcome back to the Fanvestor Report, a weekly podcast covering the business of celebrity that fans want in on. I'm your host, Jess Moyer, a fellow fan and investor. Let's catch up on the latest for the fans of the world of tech, entertainment, entrepreneurship, happy news, and rock and roll. The production of the new Bob Ross documentary has run into some happy little legal battles. Jennifer Aniston has launched her own vegan hair care line and queer eye hairdressing expert Jonathan Van Ness joined Aniston and a number of other celebrities in the now star-studded cruelty-free beauty business. And Fanvestor's mission, well, is to invest with heart. And rock and roll artists are doing just that in making a greater impact outside the Hall of Fame. We will feature some of the bands who are giving back and have a one-on-one -on -one interview with Wes Gear, formerly a guitarist with the legendary band Korn. He'll share insight from his new book, Rock to Recovery, Music as a Catalyst for Human Transformation. Fans of rock and roll know the impact of their music has reached far beyond the Sunset Strip. And while many celebs are known for their charity work, we wanted to highlight the rock stars making an impact. With massive fan bases and access to incredible resources, it can make it easier for these superstars to raise money, mobilize efforts, and create impact for a good cause. Some bands play charity concerts like Rock to Recovery, some donate part of their income, and some even have their own organizations to fight global poverty and substance abuse. The Fanvestor social team, who are total rock stars, by the way, shared the good news with fans earlier this week, inspired by the feature in Borgen magazine. Some of the highlights include Coldplay. The British rock band Coldplay donated 10% of their first album proceeds to benefit those in need. Coldplay has been an active part of the initiative by Global Citizens that urges countries to financially support education for girls who aren't able to attend school. The band stated that education for all girls is so important to improve life quality, independence, and health for women. Within only three years, the Global Poverty Project, with the help of Coldplay, supported Global Citizen and was able to get more than $16.6 billion to those around the world. Linkin Park band members also established the charity program Music for Relief. The program's primary mission is to provide relief for communities impacted by natural disasters. The aid focuses on giving people the tools to rebuild their communities in a self-reliant and sustainable way. In the 16 years since Lincoln Park created the program, Music for Relief has provided aid in more than 35 natural disaster response cases on six different continents and has supported the long-term recovery in those areas. And fans, there's more. Maroon 5 has been leading the pop charts and charity activists for more than a decade. One of the band's most notable achievements is Hashtag Maroon 5 Day, an annual event that was introduced way back in 2016. For five days, the band members motivated their fans to donate money to UNICEF, and more than $50,000 was raised to give impoverished children access to essential services, such as healthcare and education. Until his death in 2017, Chris Cornell of Audio Slave was especially dedicated to supporting good causes and creating an impact. He supported nonprofits like Global Angels, a program that promotes equity for people in less advantaged areas and helps them achieve self-sustainability. Cornell and his spouse also had established their own foundation with the mission to raise awareness and provide aid for homelessness, impoverished and abused children worldwide. They also raised money to help other nonprofit organizations like the International Rescue Committee, otherwise known as the IRC. In 2016 alone, the IRC was able to reach approximately 26 million people in need. Cornell donated all of the profits made from his music video, The Promise, to the IRC. Fans, keep it here for our featured interview with Wes Gear, former guitarist for the legendary rock band Korn. Wes Gear has been a professional musician for over 25 years, and after completing his career as a touring musician, Wes founded Rock to Recovery, an innovative music program that harnesses the healing energy of music through songwriting, playing as a band, and recording. Wes will share insight from his latest book, Rock to Recovery, Music as a Catalyst for Human Transformation, which was co-written by Constance Scharf, an international recognized speaker and author on the topics of addiction recovery and mental health. We're all fans of something or someone investing our time and loyalty but getting little in return. Well, it's about to change forever with Fanvestor, a platform that lets you get in on celebrity businesses early on, buy shares of their new startups, support a charity and new product drops, and share once in a lifetime experiences with them. What's up, it's Amari Stoudemire here, and we're launching Masa with Fanvestor to offer a limited edition, perks, products, and experience to my fans. Here's how it works. Go to fanvestor.com. 
choose an opportunity you want to get in on. Click here and there, and you're done. Go check your email for the investor's certificate. And don't forget to check back often for updates on your new business investment. It's official now. Celebrate your support with an experience. Go 10 rounds in the gym with Amare, get a matching tattoo with Super Dope Q, or get on FaceTime and hang out by the pool with DJ Khaled. After all, you're more than a fan now. You're a fan fester. Welcome back to the Fanvester Report podcast. I am so excited to be here with Wes Gear. Wes, thank you so much for being in the studio Thanks with us for today. Me. And it, today is a big day. Congratulations. Big day. Release of the new album. And yeah. of course, we're talking about your new book, Rock to Recovery mm -hmm. Music as a Catalyst for Human Transformation. First of all, though, I mean, bravo. Let's talk about the new album. Okay, let's talk about it. Tell me everything. Well, the okay, fans want to know. Yeah, we have a band. It's called Human. Which, of course, we've screwed ourselves on how to spell it, but it's H-U-3-M-3-N. Long story there. But, uh, yeah, we put it – it's not the whole album. We put out another song today. We're doing the drip-drip effect like you have to do. Oh. It's called Edging. And uh, <laughs> Wait, the song is called Edging? Or the... Edging, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. It's called cool. Edging. Kind of speaks to, like, the crazy place uh, humans go – in love or life where you just go over that edge and you're you know insanity and do things that you would never normally do we've all been there oh more than we'd yeah. like to admit i'm not saying i've ever been a stalker but other things lose it you know i won't go into it. there's still lawsuits pending actually. oh come on come on but other things have taken you to the edge of course that leads us to yeah. the conversation about rock to recovery and this book and this book and this book Let's talk about it. So it. in this book, of course, are 18 stories really that are transformative and explaining how music has been the catalyst for that. But you, Wes, were the catalyst for that in Rock to Recovery. Yeah. Uh, I Wow. Where to start with it? it basically, you know, I uh, had I had a horrible time with addiction and drugs and drinking when I was out there on tour. And I, I went to a rehab and I got myself right. And uh, through the help of being taught how to change and transform and then as a result, that's how I got the gig playing guitar with Korn. And then when Brian Head Welch came back, I was out of a job and a career. So I was really reaching out to the universe going, OK, well, I have this story and transformation from addiction. I'm also a musician. How do I take who I am and help other people? And that's really was the key that kind of cracked open the heavens, if you will. I felt like the universe really jumped in big time. And then I came up with this idea to take music into treatment centers because we were doing yoga and drawing pictures with crayons and all stuff which is great but there wasn't music there and i had a guitar with me as a client and i saw how just playing a little guitar transformed the whole room especially in that state so raw so broken so hurt full of shame and guilt and loss you know um and so when the corn gig was going away i was like you know what i'm gonna try to bring music into treatment centers I'm not a doctor, I'm not a licensed therapist, but I came up with this methodology that's very unique uh, to how we do it. And it started working really well. I saw people who were suicidal and dope sick and just angry and crying and my friend, you know, my mom just died. And at the end of an hour session doing what's become Rock to Recovery, they'd be transformed. They'd be a different person. It's so powerful to experience music in that way. But I can know personally, even if I play a certain song, it can like take me back to that moment or have this healing effect or make me sad. I mean, music and the way it affects our emotional state and our mental state is undeniably powerful. It, it's almost like, I can't believe this hasn't been done before. This is so incredible that you recognize that, Wes, and then we're able to take this. And you don't have to be a musician. No, it's actually for non-musicians. And, and, you know, we didn't invent music. We're not the first per people to use music therapeutically, but it's been used that way tribally and religiously and spiritually throughout history. We just have a way that we do it that's unique to us. Uh, and, yeah, so you're speaking to how much music changes the way we feel when we listen to it. And that's because it engages half the brain. But in our program, we actually play musician. Uh, we actually play music. We get non-musicians to play music and in, and write music. And so, in, inside of one session, which is an hour or two, we uh, connect on an emotional level, process out what we're feeling in real time. Which that's what songs are. They're they're thoughts and feelings and emotions put to music. 
and uh, we write it and record it. And so what happens is we're not just getting the emotional aspect, we're also getting the uh, mechanical aspect. We're using both sides of the brain. Playing music is incredibly unique in that way. And by engaging the whole brain, we're actually rewiring it and creating new experiences and helping with the nat uh, natural secretion of like dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin, which is the love molecule. So we're actually getting people high and rewiring their brains. On rock and roll. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. That's I, pretty cool. You know, we've had interviews similar to this in the past, Wes and I, and he's explained it almost as the vortex of radness, right? It is the vortex. Well, that's a little farther down the line. But yes, and by the way, we don't just do rock and roll. We call it rock to recovery because, you know, you're rocking whenever you're feeling the music. But, you know, we'll go into different genres and country and reggae and rap and hip hop, whatever the group's feeling. Um, but yeah, so the vortex of radness is like when you finally found that transformation. See, when we're hurting and we're in, we're, we're in survival mode, right? Yeah. If you're beaten up and destroyed, you just need oxygen to survive, metaphorically. When you find your way out and you reach back and start helping other people out and the universe starts aligning and you get that high from helping others and you're seeing like, oh my God, look at you now. Yeah, look at you, thank you. And then it's that energy we start sharing and that's that vortex and I call it the vortex of radness. Ever since you explained that to me, I have used that in my own moments when I recognize the power of transformation, whether it be through music or, you know, just conscious minds. And it is so powerful, especially right now. Mm. We really, really need that. So thank you. Oh, my for, pleasure. Thank you. I mean, you. thank you for all the work you're doing. I mean, for the band Human, for this incredible book that's filled with all these stories of, of transformations. Of course, this is the first day I've got the book and I'm going to have to sign it. Um, but could you give us a sneak peek, some insight into some of the stories that have been shared for the fans? Yes. So so the, the reason we did the book is we were seeing these transformations happen in sessions and we wanted to document it. So we thought, do we do like a, a study and, you know, study people and, and uh, I connected with Dr. Constance Scharf. She worked at a high-end treatment center up in Malibu, and she's an award-winning author, and and actually was the first to uh, get a doctorate in like these alternative practices like music. And she said, "We got to write a book." And the most obvious thing to do for us was take 18 stories of people who actual actually had incredible transformations, with the help of rock recovery. We weren't the be-all end-all. Right, but we were a key impetus. So in here, there's veterans, and <laughs> can I show the book now. But there's veterans and women who are sex traffic and and rock stars and addicts and alcoholics and you know, um, you know, uh, LGBTQ uh, community is represented. There's all sorts of transformations in there. Well, you've done so much, though, not to, just to transform people who are in these centers, but to transform the community of rock and roll. I mean, I've been to a couple of the Rock to Recovery events. First of all, mm. the coolest concerts I have ever <laughs> been to. I'm not talking just about like the lineup of incredible musicians, but the vibe of the entire place is so positive. But you've really spearheaded this. And, in you know the world of artists and in rock and roll can you share with us a little bit about that and the people mm. who are a part of that in this community right so you know when i was in high school and i watched my rock star idols get drunk and you know david lee roth at the s festival was so drunk he couldn't remember the words and i was like yeah this is great and then you get on the other side and you watch your fellow rock star friends dying yeah. um from these this disease of addiction and so you know, Rock to Recovery started as a, a nonprofit so we could give away our services to veterans and places that can't afford it. So we decided to have an event uh, to help fund it. But the other thing is me as a guy who was trying to get out of the party scene found that like, what do you do? Just hide in a backyard barbecue huddled up with a couple sober people? You know, it can be it can be really an isolating experience. Yeah. So the other uh, endeavor of Rock to Recovery, the, the concert fundraiser, was to have a sober event, uh, and ha but have it be A-list, like as cool as any event ever. So we had like the guys from Billy Idol and uh, Stone Temple Pilots and Chester Bennington and Fred Durst and Mark McGrath and all these A-list rock stars perform while half the crowd uh, is actively in a treatment center. So 
if you can imagine you're a junkie, five days later you have an intervention and you're in a treatment center going, what happened? That treatment center goes, we're gonna go to the Rock Recovery event. And you're like, this is amazing. There's a red carpet. Hey, there's Jamie Presley and Mike Ness is telling me there would never be a social distortion yeah. if I didn't get clean. And it kind of blows their mind. And so that's what we want to do. We want to break down doors and walls. And I literally have chills like listening to this and just remembering. It's so much more, though, than just breaking down the walls. Like If I could give you a glimpse of what it is like to be in this room and to experience the power of this with the most legendary artists. I mean, it's so unreal, Wes. Like it literally brings tears to my eyes what you've done for the world of celebrity and making sobriety cool among Mm. that, for the people who are in recovery, for people just in general, fans of music and of rock. Like it's beyond. Thank you. Even yeah. though I keep talking, there are so few words to describe, really, like what, what you, the power of what you've done and what you've allowed to be so cool and what you've really allowed to, to be celebrated and embraced is just incredible. Well, thank you. It really is. I, I think, you know, this is like Fan Vester, uh, this interview, and we're, you know, talking about what we do with where we are in the world. And I had, I had a little bit of a, a platform having played with corn and stuff like that. But really the key to me when the, the whole world and universe shifted for me is, again, going, where do you want me? To yeah. the universe, to God, to your higher self, to whatever it is, where do you want me? And I really think, you know, more books I read, the more philosophy I read it's really the the key is like we're not we can't go out there and be out there just to make money or just to get the Ferrari that just doesn't work what works is when we go I want to do this because it's going to help other people and then I really think the universe comes together exponentially to help us and it and you know I was just reading Return to Love by Marianne Williamson and it talks about it doesn't matter if you're a barista at Starbucks if you're sweeping halls if you're President of the United States, our goal is to work for the common good of all. And when we bring that in, that's when we have the greatest success. So mm. I don't take, I did a lot, I've worked my butt off for sure, but so much credit just goes to all the people around me who've been supportive and, and the magic things that come to pass that, that's what I think so many people don't realize is when you're out there trudging away and trying to make things happen, your brain can only think of like these logical things. It's never going to think of, wow, I just happened to run into that guy at the store that day and it turned into this thing. I never thought, you know, and we have to know those moments are going to come too when we're working uh, for the greater good. Oh, amen. You know, we're here having a conversation, of course, on the Fanvestor Report podcast yeah. and Fanvestor's mission is all about investing with heart. And it yeah. goes so far and beyond money, although we all love money, <laughs> we, yeah. we, you know, but the point is, is to be able to invest in your heart and that's in business or your time or your service. So Wes, what do you think has been the best investment you've ever made? The best investment I ever made was to uh, go internally and learn how to unload and process all the little traumas and idiosyncrasies and, and emotional damages that I had. Not that I was like some victim or something, but because I saw where even the subtle things that you think, oh, my parents divorced, that doesn't matter, I don't care about that. You see where it plays in your life where I had this need to be you know, perfectionist and all this stuff because the greatest, most important work we can do is with ourselves to bring the best version of ourselves back out into the world. Because mm. if I'm broken and hurt and I have anger triggers or I don't like you and I'm mad at you, nah, 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 then I'm not gonna be able to be the best me and I have to be the best, most realized, uh, purest version of myself and bring that out in the world. And then right now we're looking at the world. Everybody's like, oh, it's so messed up. Everybody's battling. Right. So then again, the battle isn't with them. They're the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's never going to get us anywhere. The battle is go inside and figure out what I can do to make myself stronger, to bring the purest state I can back into the world and make real change. And music is the catalyst. It can be the medicine. Yeah. Let me just preach that for you, Wes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. But it, it is so true. I know you mentioned briefly your co-author, Constance. Mm. It, talk to us a little bit more about, about her and your experience working together. Well, I'm an ADD musician, you know, I, you know, and she is, she's a doctor. She's, she's just brilliant genius. She's a great writer. And uh, 
this book wouldn't exist without her. Um, obviously, I started the program and, and the platform and, and, you know, this thing we're going to talk about. But she is such a uh, brilliant mind in terms of capturing these stories, writing them up and making them hit you right in the heart. And what happened for her, she actually worked in music at, uh, at a record label and uh, was also writing, but was so passionate about seeing veterans who have such high suicide rates mm -hmm. not um, recover, coming back with TBI and, and different forms of trauma that she really wanted to dedicate herself to like getting better results in recovery. And let's face it, we're all in recovery from something. It could be a breakup or it could be a big you know, gunfight you had. It could be gang violence or it could just be like some subtle emotional traumas we had as a kid. But we're all trying to find our way back to that childlike spirit that before it was damaged. You know, and that's something that Constance is super passionate about. Mm. I've been working on for 20 something years. Well, you know, in Hollywood, especially, they say your network is your net worth. Mm. Someone beyond Constance, who do you think in your network has made the biggest impact on you? Wow. Uh, in my network, who's, well, you know, I got to first say thank you to the guys in Corn for giving me that gig because without that, um, if I came to pitch this idea of, uh, of, you know, music and bring it to rehabs, my first band wasn't big enough. They'd probably be like, yeah, that's nice, buddy. Get out of here. But, you know, getting that gig with Corn opens doors, you know. So when I speak, people listen a little bit more. Oh, this guy I'm from Corn, you know, so I have to start yeah. there. And then, you know, my teachers, a lot of them have just been some of my greatest friends who give you that book that they're like, you should read this. And, and there's so many of those. Everybody who works in Rock to Recovery in, in um, their own way has had their own transformations. And we're like a just we're like a family that pushes each other to always keep evolving and doing better. So um, I don't know, you know, my, you know. My mom was being there. If I, you know, we talk. We're talking about homeless people. If I didn't have my mom and my brother Alan when I was falling through the, you know, the tree of addiction, if you will, catch me and put that intervention in and help me get right, I'd probably be on the street too. You know what I mean? It's easy to look on the street and go, "Oh, these people get jobs, you bum," but it's like I had people help me from not going too far into the gutter, um, and so I, I'm super blessed for that. Absolutely. We talked earlier in the show about some other great, you know, bands and musicians who have committed to giving back, whether, you know, like you and Rock to Recovery or Global Citizen. Um, it, it's incredible that, you know, with porn on your resume, with this fan base, you do have the power and the mobility to really create an impact, mm -hmm. to create a legacy. What is it that you want your legacy to be, Wes? Yes. Yeah, so when the corn gig went away, I was, you know, lost and scared. And uh, I remember thinking, well, there's been a lot of great guitar players out there. So I'm not trying to be the best guitar player in the world. What can I create that will live on helping people after I'm dead and gone? And that was before I figured out the idea for Rock to Recovery. So what I love about Rock to Recovery now is that we do about 600 sessions a month. Most of the people who do sessions don't even know who I am who I am and I could die and I you know the company would struggle somewhat in my absence I'm sure but I'm kind of being silly and tongue-in-cheek but this thing we've created will go on for years helping people and that's that's to me my legacy is is that I created something that will help people when I'm dead and gone long dead and gone music is the catalyst for transformation <laughs> yeah why don't we use it more that's what I'm asking we got to use music therapeutically more than pills Cue the music right now, yes, Johnny seriously. Vegas, the producers. Wes, please remind everyone where they can find, follow, support you, and of course, get your book. Yeah, it's very easy. Uh, it's Rock to Recovery. Um, that's our website. We're on all the socials there. Um, our website's really great. You can actually listen to songs people have written in our sessions. Uh, you can donate there. We do have the nonprofit. You can see some highlights from the events like Corey Taylor and Katie Seagal coming on stage and telling their story. And uh, I'm Wes Gear, seven little letters. You can find me online. You can always hit me up and we'll have a chin wag, as they say in England. Yes, and the book <laughs> yeah. is also available on Amazon. Fans, thank you so much. Be sure to like, comment, follow, subscribe to Rock to Recovery. Yeah. Get the book. 
And remember, music is the medicine. Keep it here. We'll be back with more on Trambester. Tens Thanks, of thousands please. of Americans die from substance abuse and suicide each year. Millions more suffer from mental health disorders. Rock to Recovery is an innovative therapeutic music program serving more than 100 addiction treatment and mental health facilities in the USA, offering participants and fans help and hope. By writing, playing, and recording music as a group, non-musicians are able to build a community of support and find enthusiasm for treatment and realize that recovery is possible. Veterans, trauma survivors, and those struggling with substance abuse or mental health issues can recover with connection. This book contains 18 stories of people who have used the Rock to Recovery music program to live a better life. You can use the music to heal too. Music is the medicine. Welcome back, fans. Here's the latest in other celebrity good news and business news. Bob Ross was a well-loved for his puffy hair, soothing voice, and happy little trees. He encouraged many at-home artists to pick up the palette or simply mesmerize the rest of us into watching him create on screen. So it's no surprise Hollywood wants to remake the magic. Actor Melissa McCarthy and her husband, filmmaker Ben Falcone, are in production on a new documentary about the life of Bob Ross. According to Falcone, Bob Ross had become sort of a rock star of his time, but his legacy and his estate are far more complicated than the producers realized, and very few people in his life have even agreed to speak to the cameras or share stories in fear of getting sued. When someone is an artist, no matter what their medium is, there's a business behind it, McCarthy says. Fans are hoping for more than happy little accidents, and audiences are craving a Bob Ross masterpiece. Jennifer Aniston is known for many things. Many fans love her most for her role as Rachel in the iconic series Friends and that infamous hairstyle and color many 90s lovers are still rocking today. I personally may have made a trip or two to her colors, Michael Canale, over the years in search of that effortlessly golden blonde look. The actor and entrepreneur who has been listed as one of the world's most beautiful women is also among the wealthiest. Her net worth is estimated at 300 million. And now she's adding to her portfolio with the launch of Lola V, a totally vegan hair care line. Aniston took to Instagram to make the announcement to her fans. The caption, we're really proud to say it's been made without all the bad stuff. We're paraben free, silicon free, sulfate free, phthalate free, gluten free, vegan, and of course, cruelty free because we love our animals. The cruelty-free beauty business is more star-studded than ever, and Queer Eyes hairdressing expert Jonathan Van Ness has joined the ranks. He launched his new hair care brand, JVN Hair, at Sephora. Just like Aniston's product, the range is free from silicones and sulfates, vegan and cruelty-free. The demand for cruelty-free beauty is booming, and the global vegan beauty market is estimated to be $25 billion by 2029. This is indicating to fans that the future of beauty is vegan. In fact, many brands are future-proofing their business by becoming cruelty-free and vegan, as the plant-based trend is going nowhere. Cue the stock watch and all the leaping bunnies. Fans, if you want to get in on the next mega celebrity brand, it's time to invest with heart. Fanvestor is an innovative digital crowdfunding platform, think Star Engine meets E, where fans can support their favorite celebrities, fashion icons, media moguls, athletes, actors, etc., and participate through e commerce auctions with one of a kind perks and experiences. Accredited and non accredited fans can invest in equity crowdfunding projects and Right now, drumroll please, you can actually invest in Fanvestor. Visit fanvestor.com for more details and exclusive perks. Fans, thank you so much for streaming this week's episode of the Fanvestor Report. Special thanks, of course, to our guest, Wes Gear. Congratulations on your new album and the release of your book. May music be the medicine for you all. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and follow the Fanvestor Report podcast and invest with heart. We'll see you next time.